Martin Lindstrom, Biology, Truth and Lies About Why We Buy and the New Science of Desire. Dive into the fascinating world of neuromarketing and consumer behavior with Martin Lindstrom's Biology, Truth and Lies About Why We Buy and the New Science of Desire. The book explores how our minds respond to various stimuli, from mirror neurons and dopamine to somatic markers, thereby influencing our purchasing decisions. Unravel the tactics marketers use to tap into our subconscious, appealing to both our positive and negative emotions, and even exploiting our fears. Unlock the secrets surrounding subliminal messaging and how brands employ strategies akin to religious organizations in creating loyalty. Hop on this eye-opening journey that uncovers the truth behind the age-old adage, sex sells and presents the latest technological advancements in neuromarketing as a research tool. The Power of Mirror Neurons Have you ever wondered why yawning is contagious or how a simple smile can light up someone's face? The answer lies in our neurochemistry. Mirror neurons, discovered by scientist Giacomo Rizzolatti in 1992, have the ability to simulate others' actions in our brain, creating a strong empathetic connection. Companies have leveraged the power of mirror neurons to create advertisements which stimulate our desire to buy products, making it an essential marketing tool. Beyond advertising, mirror neurons collaborate with dopamine to produce the pleasurable, retail therapy, feeling, a mechanism rooted in our evolutionary pursuit of increased social status and reproductive chances. When you yawn or smile, there is a good chance you might spur a chain reaction. This fascinating phenomenon can be attributed to mirror neurons, which help us perceive and understand others' emotions and actions on a deeper level. They are responsible for the empathetic connections we form by automatically reenacting in our minds whatever we observe others doing. Mirror neurons were discovered while studying macaque monkeys, and it was revealed that their premotor neurons lit up when performing an action as well as when observing another monkey perform the same action. This same activation is present in human brains, emphasizing our innate ability to create connections and understand others on a profound level. Marketers have successfully employed mirror neurons to compel consumers to purchase their products. By using images of people engaging with products or showcasing attractive models, advertisements can stimulate our brains and trigger our mirror neurons, creating a subconscious desire to own those products ourselves. Dopamine, a pleasure hormone, often joins forces with mirror neurons to create that enjoyable feeling we experience when shopping. Our evolutionary instincts drive us to be strongly attracted to products that signify higher social status and increased chances of reproduction. This desire for social elevation encourages us to pursue the latest car models or high-end fashion items, and our brains reward us with a flood of dopamine, making shopping an enjoyable, almost addictive experience. The Power of Somatic Markers When selecting products, have you ever wondered why certain brand choices come easily, without much thought. It's because of somatic markers. Somatic markers are mental shortcuts formed by our brains based on accumulated experiences, linking emotions to particular choices. Over half of our purchasing decisions are influenced by these unconscious reactions. Brands cleverly use somatic markers for marketing by creating associations, like Andrex's Labrador puppy mascot, which evokes memories of young families and toilet training. When consumers think of German kitchen appliances, they're spontaneously reminded of technological excellence. Somatic markers shape the effectiveness of even unlikely marketing tactics, such as turning a failing bank's color scheme to pink, a hue connected to childhood piggy banks, resulting in a booming business. Fear, a powerful marketing weapon. Fear can be a potent marketing tool, tapping into our emotions to increase sales. Advertisers exploit negative feelings, causing us to seek positive experiences through purchases. The 1964 presidential candidate Lyndon B. Johnson's Daisy commercial is a classic example, where the message was to vote for Johnson or risk nuclear war. Fear-based marketing links products to the absence of adverse consequences, forcing us to buy them to avoid negativity. Johnson & Johnson's No More Tears Baby Shampoo is one such example, promising a tear-free bath experience for babies. 
Fear is undeniably powerful, and marketers often exploit this emotion to make us buy more. Our instinctive response to stress or fear is to seek comfort and stability, in the form of purchases that trigger a dopamine rush. This happy hormone, in turn, fuels our desire to keep shopping. Advertisers know that if they can make us fearful of a negative outcome, while simultaneously offering a solution, we are more likely to open our wallets. A famous case illustrating this strategy was Lyndon B. Johnson's 1964 Daisy presidential campaign ad, where a child playing with daisies is suddenly engulfed in a nuclear explosion. The message was clear, vote Johnson or face the horrifying prospect of nuclear war. Political strategist Tom Friedman studied the ad's impact on viewers' amygdala, the brain's fear center, and found significant increased activity. This reaction undoubtedly contributed to Johnson's election victory. Marketing campaigns that leverage fear create associations between specific products and the avoidance of negative experiences. For instance, diet pills and computer security software imply that failing to purchase them will lead to undesirable outcomes. By positioning these products as safeguards against unpleasant experiences, we are enticed to buy them. A well-known example of this technique is Johnson & Johnson's No More Tears Baby Shampoo, which promises parents a pain-free bathing experience, free from the distressing memories of their own childhood burned eyes. No parent wants to inflict that pain on their child, making the purchase almost irresistible. Subliminal Messaging Impact Subliminal messaging, the use of sensory stimuli perceived only by the subconscious, has been a controversial topic since 1957. Although explicitly banned by the National Association of Broadcasters, subliminal messages are still prevalent in today's marketing strategies. Examples include freshly baked cookies in open houses, new car smells, and background music in shops. These seemingly innocuous stimuli elicit subconscious reactions that can affect purchasing decisions. Even large corporations like Philip Morris, the owner of Marlboro, use subtle color schemes and symbols in bar decorations that resemble their brand logo. Neuromarketing studies suggest that subliminal messaging does impact decision-making. One experiment revealed that test subjects exposed to happy faces poured more beverage and were willing to pay twice as much as those shown frowning faces. This finding implies that something as simple as a smiling cashier can significantly influence sales. Subliminal messages, whether ethically questionable or innocently employed, continue to sway consumer behavior behind the scenes. Smoke, warnings, and cravings. There was a time when doctors often endorsed specific cigarette brands, but today's smokers find themselves faced with vivid and gruesome health warnings whenever they purchase a pack. Despite these warnings, around 15 billion cigarettes are still sold globally every day. Research shows that cigarette warning labels are not effective in reducing cravings, in fact, they can have the opposite effect. One study found that brain scans of volunteers exposed to warning labels showed no reduction in cravings on a neurological level. Surprisingly, these labels might even stimulate the brain's craving spot or nucleus accumbens. This counterproductive effect was demonstrated in another experiment where volunteers were shown a repulsive anti-smoking ad. The ad's ugliness did not deter smokers, and their desire for a cigarette increased instead. Thus, health disclaimers on cigarettes may actually be promoting smoking rather than discouraging it. Loyalty, Brands and Religions Surprisingly, Coca-Cola and the Catholic Church employ similar strategies in sparking and maintaining loyalty. Brands, like religious institutions, profit from incorporating rituals, proclaiming unique missions, generating an us-versus-them mentality, utilizing iconography, and stirring emotional connections that resemble our spiritual attachments. These tactics play a significant role in fostering brand loyalty. What connects Coca-Cola with the Catholic Church? It's the shared tactics used to engender loyalty among their followers. Both institutions incorporate quasi-religious rituals, making brands stickier and emotionally resonant to foster attachment. Take Oreo, each consumer has a unique way of enjoying the cookie, turning Oreo into a personal ritual. 
Another strategy employed by strong brands and major religions is having a distinctive mission that sets them apart from their counterparts. For instance, IBM strives to offer solutions for a small planet, while Bang and Olufsen continuously break conventional barriers to deliver surprising, long-lasting experiences. Integrating an us-versus-them mentality is a classic, albeit controversial, technique that bolsters brand loyalty. For example, the rivalry between Coke and Pepsi or Visa and MasterCard creates fanatic followers by highlighting the contrasts between competitors. This comparative approach cements loyalty within a social community. Symbolism also plays a crucial role in loyalty, as brands and religions use powerful icons to evoke emotional connections. Consider the instant recognition we attribute to Nike's swoosh or McDonald's golden arches, these logos stir emotions just like religious symbols such as an angel or the crown of thorns. Neuromarketing studies even reveal that our brains respond to strong brands and religious icons in similar ways. Brain activity triggered by images of iconic brands like the iPod, Harley-Davidson, and Ferrari closely resemble the responses generated by religious symbols. This neurological evidence indicates that emotional engagement with strong brands mirrors spiritual attachments, securing loyalty in the hearts and minds of the followers. Debunking Sex Sells Myth The old adage, sex sells, is ubiquitous in advertising, but is it effective marketing? Studies have shown that sexual content does not necessarily increase a product's marketability. The vampire effect described in one study reveals that racy images often distract viewers from brand names and logos, diverting attention away from the actual advertisement. However, sex may still have some value in advertising, but mostly for its shock value and the resulting controversy. For example, American Apparel has thrived despite criticism of its sexualized ad campaigns, proving that it's not the sex itself that sells, but rather the controversy surrounding it. You've probably come across advertisements filled with sexual imagery and innuendos, but have you ever wondered if it really works? Surprisingly, advertising's famous reliance on sexiness might not actually make products more marketable. In one study, Two groups were asked to watch different shows punctuated by commercial breaks, one experienced sexually explicit material from Sex and the City, while the other viewed the less provocative Malcolm in the Middle. Participants watching Sex and the City were less likely to remember the advertisements compared to those viewing Malcolm in the Middle, suggesting that sexual content in commercials doesn't necessarily leave a lasting impression. This phenomenon extends to print ads as well. Researchers from Media Analyzer Software and Research observed that when volunteers were shown ads varying from sexually suggestive to utterly boring, people's attention gravitated towards the sexual content. However, this actually came at a cost, participants consistently ignored brand names and logos. This aptly named, vampire effect, implies that sexual imagery drains attention away from the central advertisement. Despite these findings, sex in advertising might still have some merit, particularly when it comes to generating shock value and controversy. In the case of American Apparel, whose campaigns feature young models in suggestive poses, criticism for their pornographic content hasn't hampered their skyrocketing sales. Ultimately, this demonstrates that the sex itself isn't necessarily selling, but rather it's the uproar and discussion it stirs up that makes an impact. Neuromarketing Predicting success. Neuromarketing enables companies to better predict consumer preferences and a product's potential success by tapping into unconscious decision making. Traditional surveys may fall short due to this unconscious behavior, but neuromarketing can reveal true consumer motivations and reactions. Understanding these motivations can help companies adjust their marketing techniques and even the pricing strategies to match the desires of their target audience. When it comes to consumer choices, the majority of decisions are made unconsciously. This makes traditional surveys and questionnaires somewhat unreliable in predicting the success of a product. Neuromarketing, on the other hand, can provide valuable insights into the true preferences of consumers by examining their brain activity. For instance, a study was conducted where participants watched three different TV shows and then rated their likelihood of rewatching them. 
While traditional questionnaires predicted quiz mania to be the least popular, the actual brain scans revealed that participants' preferences differed significantly. How clean is your house? Proved to be the most successful, followed by quiz mania and then the swan. Neuromarketing can also pinpoint the effectiveness of marketing techniques and help companies avoid those that backfire. For example, Nationwide Annuities aired a commercial featuring Kevin Federline working at a fast food restaurant with a tagline suggesting that investing with them could prevent financial hardship. Neuroimaging data showed that this commercial actually repelled potential customers. By understanding the motives of their customers, companies can enhance their products and marketing strategies. Another neuromarketing study asked participants to rate their enjoyment of different wines, with one wine presented twice but with different price tags. Brain scans revealed that activity in the medial orbitofrontal cortex, known for perceiving pleasure, increased when participants were presented with the more expensive wine. This implies that a higher price tag can improve the enjoyment of a product even when its quality remains constant. As a result, companies can hone their pricing strategies to maximize sales and appeal to their target audience. In A Biology, Martin Lindstrom uncovers the complex psychological factors that drive our consumer decisions. The key insights reveal the power of mirror neurons, the importance of somatic markers, and the exploitation of emotions such as fear in marketing. Furthermore, the book delves into the controversial use of subliminal messaging and the connections between brands, religion, and loyalty, as well as debunking the effectiveness of sexual content in advertising. With a deep understanding of neuromarketing now at your fingertips, you can better comprehend why certain advertisements and strategies succeed, and may even find yourself making more informed and conscious purchasing decisions.